Will there be a government shutdown tomorrow? You know, honestly, um, if I had to bet, I would say no, because it would be really dumb for them to do. But I'm watching the rhetoric in the last 24 hours, and it's really terrible rhetoric, which is they're trying to blame the Democrats somehow, which yeah. they are in charge of the House. They are in charge of the Senate. They're in charge of the White House. And because of the extreme terrorist wing of the Republican Party, the Tea Party, um, because they won't vote for funding, period, and they can't get their party together, they're going to somehow try to blame the Democrats. Now, a little bit of truth in the Senate, right, because of how many votes you need. But the bottom line is they can't coordinate their own members to vote for a funding package. And now they're trying to pass the blame, which is, again, why I argue it's been since 2010. It's really been so different. I've been doing this now for over 25 years. It's so different because they just can't govern with the extremists that they've brought in since 2010 into the Republican Party. Right. And uh, if they keep the, keep the government going, what happens to the Dreamers? Is any any resolution of the Dreamers? Well, and that's the thing. I'm you know I've been one of the people early on with uh, Luis Gutierrez and Raul Grijalva, Pramila Jayapal, and others who has said we're not voting for CR if uh, at minimum DACA uh, you know isn't fixed because it's a problem. The president broke it. It's like he took a vase, broke it, and said, "Okay, now we got to fix it." He yeah, it was he, it, something. That's an important point to make yeah. is the Dreamers program was in place. It was working. It, it was do, you know effective. There were no problems with it at all, all. His rhetoric about rapists and criminals and drug dealers had nothing to do. No one would say it had anything to do with DACA. No. So um, just unilaterally, unnecessarily, yeah. right, cruelly. He just ripped that program out, threw it to Congress, like you said, the yeah. base, broke it, and then threw it to Congress and said, patch it up. Yeah. And what's interesting is right now, almost all the Republicans who talk about it say they agree we should fix DACA. And if we all agree, we shouldn't have to trade something for it. We should just fix what the president broke and say, don't do it again. And instead, they won't stand up to him. So, you know, we're in this uh, really bad place. But, I mean, to take, you know, six to 800,000 people around the country who— you know, I've got a lot of constituents who we've talked to around this. It's just um, awful that the president does these sort of things to begin with, period. But I think it's even more awful that Mitch McConnell and Paul Ryan from my home state are complicit with all of these actions. I think that's what we're seeing in these special elections. No, oh, no, absolutely. And, uh, you know, we saw the look, talk, talk about being complicit. Look at Tom Cotton and David Perdue. Th that's a new level of pathetic complicitness, right? We used to at least have that respectful difference between a, a co-equal yeah. branch of government and to watch them now not remember. And they're acting like there's a great distinction if a case it was S. Hole or S. House. house. It's like, yeah, oh, my right. God. As, as if. Oh, I can no, guarantee everyone. Whole, he said S. <laughs> house. And that's that a makes huge, a difference. In Wisconsin, everyone thinks we're full of S. Right. <laughs> that's the only thing they know, <laughs> because it's a stupid debate we're having. To your point, though, about the whole respect thing, like we're now in a point where senators are in the open <clears throat> questioning whether or not they're telling the truth, which is not I mean, the, the whole senatorial courtesy thing is a real thing. Right. Like everybody it used treats to be, each other. Yeah. It used to be. It used to be. Everybody treats each other, even across the aisle, with some form of just respect and now you've got essentially tom cotton coming out and calling dick durbin a liar and for what yeah i, I to, think to curry favor with donald trump that and don't forget tom cotton i think fancies himself as president someday yeah fair. so you yeah. know but it is a, and, a, but first as director of the cia yeah, after he gets even, to do some damage which first is right? even scarier yeah. <laughs> yeah but it's it's just a a really bad turn of events to see that and um again when the debate is over S hole and S house. I mean, every this is going to keep the momentum that we have on these special elections because everyone else thinks we're we're so sad for being at this place. Right.